Hey guys, it's Aaron. We are going to talk layout, as in let's talk layout, one more time. And we're going to take a look right now at masks. This is the last thing that I had queued up for this original series. So if you guys have questions on specific things you'd like to see inside a layout, please leave them in the comments. I'll, I'll call, I'll remind you to do that later. So stick around right now, watch this video, then I'll remind you, go leave a comment. So that's the order of things that should be done. So the last thing that we're going to look at in this, this original series is masking. So masking is just the process by which a certain portion of a drawing is covered by something else. So we're going to look at three different ways of masking geometry inside a layout. Here we go. All right, the first one we're going to look at is kind of the automatic one. This is the one that's built into a layout as a command. It's called a clipping mask. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a shape. I'm going to choose a circle, but you could use a polygon or a rectangle or just grab the pencil and make whatever close shape you want. And I'm going to drag that circle out over this door. What's going to happen now is whatever this circle covers up is going to end up being visible and anything that falls outside of this circle is going to... Uh, anything outside the circle is going to disappear. Anything inside the circle is going to be revealed by our clipping mask. So what I'm going to do now is select the circle and the model window. So what I want to clip and then what I want to clip from. Right click and say create clipping mask. What that's going to do then is hide everything except for what was underneath that circle. This is a clipping mask. This is actually kind of its own thing. It's a special window. This is no longer a model window and a shape. This is a clipping mask. Uh, as such, it can be edited just like anything else. Uh, right now it just has just the mask, but I can select it and say, hey, go put a stroke around that and it'll give me a, a line around there. So it's a great way to take an existing model window or image even and just show a portion of it. Now, if I wanna ever make a change, I can double click. When I double click, it will show me these pieces. So if I went, oops, I actually meant to show this door over here. I can move that over, click outside the clipping mask and it will update. Likewise, if I want to take it out, I want to just get back to the original drawing, I can right click and say release clipping mask, which will give me back both my drawing and my circle. And again, to put them back in, I would select both, right clip and create clipping mask. So that's the automatic version. That's, that's real quick, real easy. Great way to, like I said, make little details or just call attention to only a portion of your model. Let's look at a couple ways to mask things. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and hide the foundation in this drawing. This is the same drawing we had on the previous page, which is just a section through the model I've been using. So I wanna come in here and I just wanna just hide from basically uh, this concrete pad and this floor system down. I don't need to see it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the pencil tool and I'm gonna draw a shape. Uh, this has just a standard stroke and fill on it right now. That's fine. We'll adjust that as we go through here. And I'm going to use the, the snap points inside the model to kind of just trace around here and take this one straight across to here. Now I'm going to drop down the bottom of my concrete slab for my garage. I'm going to take that over here. And right here, I, I have some choices to make. I come up around this, or I'm just going to choose to go straight through and cut through that foundation wall. Now, here's where I get to be a little sloppy. I'm just gonna click out here past the geometry, so I'm gonna continue drawing my line out here and then bring it back to close up. So what that did was it gave me this nice clean line around the outside here and then just kind of chopped off the rest. What I can do is select it and I can turn off the stroke and then obviously my grid's still visible, but if my grid wasn't there, it would just look like regular white everywhere except for where the main portion of the house is. So that's one way to mask that. I can take this and put it on its own masking layer. I could grab both of these and group them together. But th that is a way to hide certain geometry. A lot of times when you create your model, uh, you have geometry in there that you don't necessarily have control over visibility. This would have been easy enough, of course, to turn off my foundation levels, but uh, this is a learning opportunity. So, you know, I, I gotta show you. All right, so let's, let's take that process and go a little step further. I'm gonna create another mask just like I did with, by drawing lines, and I want this one to basically only, I, I wanna call attention to the main floor. So right here, I want people to just see this main floor. 
I don't want to completely hide the rest of the model though. I want to kind of gray it out. So I want to still be here, but be less pronounced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and pick a point to start. I'm just going to pick this point right here. And I'm going to go up to here. I'm going to take that all the way across to here. Drop down and I'm going to trace around like this. And I'm just using the snap points in the model. It's really, this makes it super easy because those snap points uh, in the model, no, oh, see how I say that it got easy and then all of a sudden I have to deal with this mess? All right, I'm gonna cheat. I'm totally gonna cheat and just skip right over that and leave that visible. Ha, <laughs> fell out of my mask. Okay, um, but it's super easy because I do have just the snap points of the model to click to. Makes it real easy to click in 2D around that 3D shape. Because when I pull it into layout, uh, it takes that 3D geometry and does a 2D projection. So even in this in this instance, of course, it's real easy to see my my 2D projection. But uh, this works in like a 3D view too. So if I had an animated view up on my screen, I could still click to these points. It's not just because it's a flat view. Um, so something that's happening here, especially when I'm getting to these little details here, my outline my my fill is covering up the points I want to snap to. So one thing you can do as you come around here is I could turn the fill temporarily off. So now I do have to be a little more conscious about where I'm clicking, but I don't have to worry too much about making sure I don't lose what I'm drawing underneath that fill. All right, so this was the point I started. So when I come back here and I click, I'm gonna go ahead and turn fill back on now. And then I can click right here to close. So initially, well, that doesn't look much different than what I did down here, does it? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick this shape right now. I'm gonna to go to my fill, click on the fill color, which is a pure white right now. And I'm just gonna grab my opacity and slide it down. So that's gonna give me kind of a, uh, like a, a, a transparent, like I said, just clouding out. And not, not like a fog, like I would see inside of SketchUp, but just clouding out and, and losing detail on that, that back geometry. So I might go to like, uh, 80, 85%. Okay, that looks good. And there I can see, so if somebody was to look at this, they would know where this section is in reference to the rest of the model. It's not cut out like a clipping mask. They can see where it is the rest of the model, but their attention is definitely drawn right here. So this is a nice option if I don't want to completely lose it. I don't need the foundation for what I'm looking at here, but I do want to keep the rest of this house to make it call attention to where this detail is. Now, one thing you're seeing right now is uh, the inside is all grayed out, but I still have this hard line around the outside. So there's a couple things you can do to get rid of that. Um, unfortunately, I can't uh, tell this, the stroke opacity to go away completely, but I can choose to bring the opacity down a little bit. Um, I can do some things like I can come in here and drop the line width. So that makes it a little bit lighter. What I like to do with this, because I want to keep my lines, but I want them to kind of go away, is pick a color that's close to what this grayed out line is. So my solution is to go in here, go into my stroke color and choose like one of these light gray colors like that. And then that gives me a little bit closer to, I'll go even lighter than that. So go like, oops, gotta select it. Gotta select freaking edit, Aaron. All right, there we go, maybe something like that. So that's gonna make it fade out a little bit more, be a little bit lighter than what I had before. Uh, and just kind of not, not draw too much attention to the outlines, what I'm looking for. So there's three options. So here we have a clipping mask. Here we have a, I don't know, whiteout mask. And here we have a cloudy mask. I don't know, I'm making names up now, but you can see it three different ways that are pretty easy to mask things inside of layout. So hopefully you like that. And I'm just realizing I got this little shadow right behind me. I apologize. I hope that that's I'm just I'll cover it up like. Hopefully you like that. If so, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos a week and you'll be notified of them if you subscribe to our channel. Most importantly, though, do leave a comment. Like I said, I'm not planning on more Let's Talk Layout videos, but if you have ideas that would be good to look at, Leave them in the comments and maybe we'll make a couple more of these. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.